Hello and welcome to Solved or Unsolved. This is a place where we talk about true crime. I'm your host, Brent. And if you want to find out more about me and about the podcast, simply go to solvedorunsolved.com. Uh, there you can listen to all the podcasts. You can listen to them on um, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, pretty much anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can listen to this podcast. Today, we're this is the 13th episode of the podcast, and today we're talking about the deaths of Rebecca Zaha and Max Shackney. Shackney, Shackney, I think is the way you pronounce it. I will mispronounce a couple of these names. I think it's Shackney. I'm pretty sure that's the way you pronounce his last name. We're going to start with uh, Rebecca. Rebecca was a... Um, if I can think of it right, a Bernie, um, Burmese immigrant. Uh, she moved to the United States roughly in about 2001, 2002, somewhere in that area. And her whole family is her mother and father. I think she has a couple of sisters, if I remember correctly. And Rebecca was in the um, optomical field. I don't remember what her actual um, specification was, but she moved to um, Arizona. To, to get a job in the field which she had specialization and found a job that she really liked. Um, she was uh, making good money. She had enough money to, to pay all of her bills, to live, to have a place of her own for uh, rent. And she actually made enough money that every month she would um, send, I believe it was $400 a month to her family in Missouri which uh, really helped them out financially. I think they were struggling a little bit, so I really helped them out. And they were, and the family was you know, dependent upon this money. And Rebecca was, was glad that she was making enough money to live the way she wanted and to send them some extra money. So Rebecca, uh, I think it was in 2008, uh, she met a gentleman named Jonah Shackman. He was a CEO of um, a pharmaceutical company. Um, multi-millionaire, uh, just lots and lots of money. His company found something that was a substitute for Botox. Don't technically know what it is, but it's it just millions and millions of money that this man was worth. He had a home in, um, he was actually married. Uh, they started dating. Uh, he went to the eye doctor. She came in. They started talking. He asked her out and, and things just led from there. They became a couple. Now, he was married twice before, uh, the marriage first before. He had a big custody battle over two children that they had together. And then he had a son, Max, Max Shackney, uh, with his second wife, uh, Dina Romano was her name. So, and and um, Jonah has custody a lot of times, especially in the summer, of, of Max, his son. So, uh, Rebecca and Jonah are, are in a relationship and Jonah has a, um, a summer home, I guess you would call it in, I think it's Corona, not Corona, something like that. It was very close to San Diego, California. Now this was more than a summer home. This was a mansion uh, that he spent the summers at. I think the mansion had 27 rooms, um, worth maybe 14 15 million dollars just a huge huge impressive place and and Jonah and Rebecca are there and he's getting very serious they are getting serious and Jonah asked her to look I, I want you to stay here with me I want you to quit your job and just stay with me I'll pay everything he even said I will pay the money that you're paying to your family every month I, I'll do that you don't have to worry about money so Rebecca was Wanted to do this, but she was a little concerned. Okay, if I do this, you know, I'm, I'm totally dependent on this guy. Uh, I'll have no money on my own. But he said, I'll give you whatever you want. So, and she was, the one big thing was, okay, there has to be money every month going to my parents in Missouri because they really depend on this money. He agreed to it. It's no problem. So they are uh, a couple living together. Everything seems to be going fine. It's July the 11th in 2011, so not very long ago. Zahan, Max, 
and Zahan's sister, Zena, which is a teenager, are at the mansion. And this time, um, Jonah is gone somewhere. He's not there for the day. And Zahan is in the bathroom getting ready for something, and she hears a loud thump and a loud crash. So she runs into where she hears the, um, the disturbance and finds six-year-old Max laying on the floor beneath the uh, staircase. He's bleeding. He's unresponsive. He's not breathing. Well, she has a, a, the um, chandelier that was hanging there was on the ground next to Max. She has some medical training, so she performs um, so, uh, calls nine one one, and then she performs some CPR on on six year old Max. Well, um, he, he's in very bad shape. Um, it messed up his spinal cord. He has brain damage. He, he's in just dire shape. It's, it's very very bad. Uh, he goes to the hospital, and he's in the hospital for five days to where that they finally um, uh, decide to take him off the ventilator and stuff like that, and he passed away. Um, and Zahan and Max were, were very close. They got along very, very well, and, and she was deeply, deeply troubled over this. Um, and, and, of course, the police come. They do the investigation, and it was determined that this was an accident. Uh, I saw the pictures. I saw a lot of things from this um, accident. It it appears from the evidence that Max, he's six years old. He's at the top of the staircase. It's, it's two levels, but it, it's it's a mansion, so it's really high up. And I believe it's called a razor that he was playing on, it, like a skateboard with handles on it. I, I think it's called a razor. He was playing at the top of the stairs on that. And the evidence showed he may have been trying to do some kind of a stunt, like ride it down the banister or something such as that. Uh, lost his balance. He fell. Uh, it appears that he grabbed the chandelier as he was going down and went and fell face first. Uh, so this was determined by police to be an accident. And all the evidence pretty much showed that, that this was an accident. The six-year-old w- was doing something he shouldn't be doing and and, and uh, uh, passed away as a result of that. And like I said, Zahan w- was very upset on this. They, they were very close. They, this was well known, and everyone agrees to this, but she took it very, very hard. Before Max passed away, I think it was the second day he was in the hospital, Zahan was taking Zena, her sister, to the airport so that she could fly back to Missouri to be with her family. And Jonah has a brother named Adam, Adam Shacknine. He was flying in because of the accident to his nephew, Max, to to be with his brother Jonah, to be with the family. So um, Rebecca goes, uh, is taken to the airport to let her sister, um, fly to Missouri. Well, Adam was flying in a couple hours later. So Adam, I mean, Rebecca picked up Adam. And so they go back to the mansion. So Adam is going to stay in the guest house that, that's um, there on the property. And Rebecca was staying uh, in the house, of course. When they got back, it, it was uh, around eight o'clock PM. And uh, Rebecca uh, was on the phone with her sister talking about what had happened. She was very upset about it. And Adam was in the uh, guest house. At approximately about 12.50 a.m. that that same night, Jonah had um, called Rebecca's cell phone, was giving her an update on Max's condition. Um, But records show that uh, he had to leave a voicemail that Rebecca did not um, answer the phone. So... And the reason Jonah was coming, the, the doctors had seen Max and his condition was worsening. It did not look good at all. Didn't think that he was going to pull through this. So the next morning, it's about 6.45 a.m., Adam, Shack 9, makes a phone call to 911. He states that um, he found a girl uh, on the property of, and that's the way he said it, I found a girl, didn't call her by name, at the property that was hanging from the outside balcony outside in the backyard was hanging. Uh, 911 asked if she's alive. He said, I don't think so. 
So he had cut her down. She's hanging there outside, cut her down. She's laying on the ground. Uh, of course, the 911 call police are coming to do the investigation. Um, Rebecca is laying outside on the ground, completely nude. She is naked. Her feet are tied and bound. Her hands are tied behind, behind her back, bound. She, she's tied. There is a blue long sleeve t shirt wrapped around her head, and um, knots were tied in the t shirt and put into her mouth, and she was gagged. So we have a woman that supposedly hung herself. She, her feet and hands were tied and bound, and she is gagged. So, of course, there's going to be an investigation of this. A further investigation, it showed that the rope was tied to the bottom of the bed frame of the bedroom on the top floor, the second floor. Then the rope ran through the bedroom, over the banister on the balcony on the outside, and down to the ground. I mean, down to uh, where she was hanging. Inside the bedroom were found two knives um, near the front of the bed where the rope was. It was a kitchen butcher knife and what appears to be like a a larger steak knife, a a kitchen knife. Um, There's a little bit of blood on the floor next to the knives. On the bedroom door, there is uh, someone had painted some words. And near the bed was a paintbrush that an artist was, would use. Rebecca was an artist. She, she did paintings such as that. Some black acrylic paint, a tube of that, on the floor next to the knives. And on the door were written, written the words. The top line it said, She saved him. Can he save her? Police determined this. They didn't talk about it for a while, but they finally said that this was a suicide note. Um, a lot of things you can read into this. Um, the first line, she saved him. That could be Rebecca saved Max from dying right there on the spot and let him live six days later, five days later. And then the next line, can he save her? I'm assuming the her is Rebecca because she's dead can he save her who is he are talking about max um which he he's in no shape to save anyone he, he's passed away or not at this point she saved him can he save her who who is he is he jonah jonah who is he she saved him can he save her and this was written in the um, black paint that was found on the floor with the um, painting brush. Now, I, I want to talk about the way that she was found. Um, and, and everything I'm saying here is my opinion. But I do want to hear from you, the listeners, and tell me what your opinions are. Her feet are tied together. Now, now these, no, these um, ropes are tied in a nautical way, um, described as um, expert nautical way, like someone really knew what they were doing with these knots. Her hands are tied behind her back, the rope around her neck, and the T-shirt stuffed into her mouth for a gag. Now, some people were saying that uh, this could have been done if she wanted to commit suicide, because if she gets to this point, there's no way she can back out. She can't holler for help, which you're not really going to be able to holler if you're hanging. Something else of interest, um, Adam, uh, Jonah's brother, uh, is from Memphis, Tennessee, and works as a tugboat captain on the Mississippi. So he would definitely know about nautical notes. No, uh, ropes, I keep saying notes. Ropes. Um uh, her, she was. Um, Rebecca was very close to her sister. Her sister said she knew nothing at all about nautical notes. Um, Jonah did have a boat that he said they went out on a lot. Um, Rebecca's sister said that Rebecca said that they had only been on the boat twice ever. So she knew nothing about nautical knots. 
so I was trying to go through my head. How could a person do this to themselves and hang themselves? Okay, first of all, you're going to have to tie your feet. You can do that. Secondly, you're going to have to put the rope around your neck. Then you're going to have to put the gag, the t-shirt in your mouth. And somehow you're going to have to tie your hands, bind them behind your back in nautical knots that they said were very good. Um, I was thinking about this. Could she have done the, the feet, the neck, the gag, tied her hands in the front? Maybe she was very limber, put her hands down to her feet and brought them up behind her back. I'm just just thinking out loud here. I, it, it just doesn't seem that possible to me. It, it's and then she's tied, bound, and evidently somehow threw herself over the banister where she uh, passed away. Something else I looked into. Um, I looked into a um, the the fact that. Very, very few people who commit suicide, unless it's in the bathtub, um, are nude. That's a very, very rare thing. So the police are investigating this case, and Adam is there. Adam's the person that found him. So, of course, they're interviewing Adam because he's the only person at the house. Uh, the police are interviewing him. Uh, he appears to be a co- cooperative. Um, he, did, he didn't ask for an attorney. He was very cooperative. He ate, even agreed to a polygraph which we know that's not admissible in court, but it leads investigations into possibly the right direction. Uh, They asked him a lot of questions. Um, Did you have anything to do with Rebecca's death? Questions such as that. The results were odd, but I heard the interviewer talking about the um, person who administered the polygraph talking about it. He said, some of the answers, some of your answers you did well, some of your answers you did not do well. Therefore, they found it to be inconclusive. Well, that tells me he lied on some of those questions. And the questions that I heard were mainly, did you have anything to do with Rebecca's death? But the police at this point, they have, he came in on his own. They have nothing, no physical evidence, nothing such as that to hold him. So they release him. Now, also in the investigation, this I find this very odd. The the butcher knife that was laying on the bed was um, there were no prints on the handle. There were two or three prints of Rebecca's on on the blade, but they were in an odd shape. They were as if she was holding it behind her back. It's hard to describe without actually showing you. The other knife that had just a little bit of blood on it had no prints whatsoever. The bedroom um, door handle, the bedroom door, had no prints, none, not even Rebecca's. That tells me it was wiped, it was cleaned. They said that actually in the bedroom, the only DNA that they found whatsoever was Rebecca's. Well, I find that hard to believe. Jonah, Jonah lived in the house. You would think his DNA would be in that bedroom. Um, It just appeared things were clean, that that were were wiped clean. It just seems like some type of a cover-up to me. And if what appears to have happened, there would be no reason for any of this. Another thing that I found odd, and actually the police did also, they're interviewing Adam, right? He did the polygraph. He's talking. At the the end, he just all of a sudden volunteers that he said, um, before I went to the house, I was in the guest house and I was pleasuring myself sexually. What would be the reason to bring this up? Uh, it, it just it, very, very, very odd. Um, Rebecca w- was an attractive lady. Uh, there was also the black paint was also found um, on her chest, close a little bit close to her chest and on her um, near her nipple. Uh, there was a little bit of blood, a um, small amount on her inner thigh. It, it was later found that Rebecca was um, on her um, menstrual cycle, on her period. And remember, there's a little bit of blood on the knife. Uh, and 
there was no cuts on Rebecca whatsoever. Find that a little odd too, but the blood was determined through DNA to be Rebecca's blood. Um, this just all seems odd to me. So the prosecutors and the sheriff's department um, look into the case. They determined it to be suicide. Uh, the family of Rebecca, of course, is just outraged, said this is no way she would do this. Um, people that were saying it was suicide, well, she was um, upset over the death of Max, that she felt guilty for it, that, that it happened. They were very close. Um, it just pushed her over the edge, and she had hung herself. But Rebecca's family says, no, there's no way, um, no way it at all that she would ever do this now so no one's charged with the death it's officially ruled as a suicide um, a couple years later the the family of Rebecca um, they have her body resumed and a different person that they chose did another autopsy uh, this person said that um, she had some cuts on her head for cuts um that doesn't make sense with a hanging she also they said that the neck injuries were not consistent with a hanging that the neck injuries were higher up uh and i forget the name of that bone it starts with an h but it was broken um that most of the time that is what happened when uh, someone is strangled so the family's thinking uh there was some kind of sexual motivation um it went bad she was strangled, and then all this was done to make it look like a suicide. That's what the family is saying. Um, can't say I totally disagree with that. Like I said, just my opinion. I would like to hear from you. So no one's ever charged with the death. Um, Max is, is officially ruled as a accident. So the Zahan family um, said something's got to be done. we got to go forward with this. So they take Adam... Shaq Nye to civil court and sue him for $10 million. Now, civil court is different. In criminal court, it's um, guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. In civil court, it's a, I think they call it preponderance of the evidence. Very, very less uh, degree of, of uh, evidence or guilt. Well, Adam Shaq Nye is found guilty in the civil suit. And the jury awards the Zahan family $5 million. So, you know, that, that's maybe a little bit of justice. Um, my opinion, no, but maybe that helps a little bit. I, I'm not sure I've never been in that situation. But there was enough to find him guilty in civil court, but not even enough to ever even take it to court criminally. I'm still puzzled about the writing on the bedroom wall she saved him can he save her if you've enjoyed this podcast and enjoy the shows uh, please tell your family and friends they can listen um, on anywhere they want to listen spotify apple play google anywhere they want to listen they can actually go to the website solved or unsolved.com uh, if you like it please give me a positive review it really helps me out again thank you so much for listening to the show